Anyway. So what is the stencil? Uh, this is a Death Mickey Mouse stencil I made when I used to live right near Disneyland <laughs> in the late 80s in Orange County, where Disneyland is. And uh, I thought it had disappeared, but a friend of mine still had it stashed, and he lives in the Bay Area now, and he gave it to me, so I decided I will use it as the brush stencil. Numbers and are hard. That, that stencil was made to be used as a two-part deal. It had a separate face, so I just made a new face. Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping that's centered. And uh, so, so that way we get, you know, the face and the bribe. Oh, gray? All right. That's fine. <laughs> gray? All right. It's a surprise. Well, I didn't know. I didn't have a cap. You guys all over here huffing or what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. The Not Death bad. Mickey lives. <laughs> this is a uh, 1966 Volvo 122. Amazon. <laughs> I just keep looking and keep working. It kind of all works out. Yeah. What, uh, what engine does it have? Uh, this has a 91.3 liter uh, engine out of a, uh, a Volvo sedan. Like a red block? Red block, overhead cam, yeah. It's a little less prone to blowing up than the old V18. So we're going to take a good close look at this thing because it's insane. So you notice there's the uh, giant wing. Team Baca. Bit of World War II history there. You can Google that. So, the uh, driver's seat, all the way in the back, pretty much. The fabrication is fantastic on this car. Fender flares on it. Lots of people use these HVAC vents uh, to vent the hoods. I don't really know if they do anything, but they look cool. This is a, uh, not an El Camino. I mean, it is, but uh, it's actually a Honda Del Sol. You can kind of see with the uh, the panel mismatching, but we don't have to tell anybody that. Yeah, that, that's kind of the giveaway. So you lift the hood, and it's a Honda. This thing's fantastic. What is the uh, what is the bed made out of? That is a painter's tarp. Painter's tarp. <laughs> Good. Well, I mean, like, just generally, what's the body work? Is it actual El Camino body panels, or...? No, so... 70 El Camino quarter panel starts right here, and then this is all Bondo. <laughs> so they, uh, there you go, there's the hood release. I don't know, what's the next word? The panel looks about. Not those, though. See, now... This team was really smart, and they wrote their car number in here so that when they get black flagged, they know which number they are. Except it's not a number anymore. Except for they've changed numbers now. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way this is possibly going to go wrong. Do you want to know? This is Brad Brownell, who's going to be helping us with the uh, live stream. He's a Porsche-file. So, yeah. t tell me about this particular 944. Uh, it's got a 2.5 liter single overhead cam engine with weird balance shafts on either side that do wonky stuff that go backwards from the way that the engine spins to keep it from vibrating the hell out of everything. Is that Porsche refinement? Yes. Would you say Porsche yes. refinement? Yes. yes. I think Porsche would make a trans turn. They used to. I didn't know that. You guys tried like, this is really cool. Alright, so it's a 924. This is the older Audi based engine. It's got dual Weber's, so four barrels of carburetor there. It's got Team Dynamics wheels and Williams harnesses, so it's like a very European style build. Yeah, yeah, so this is the Audi. It's a Triumph! It's a Triumph! Yeah. It's an Audi 2 liter. Yes. That's Camaro with an E. So this is oh, okay. Coral Blast, like they use in political signs. So in. Industrious Lemons teams will go out during political season and pick up all of the signs the day after the election. And Actually, or before the election. Or, I, the previous tenant of the building I'm in? Yeah. 
got evicted and he left a bunch of, he had a, a band and entertainment and he left a bunch of little podiums that were made out of purple. So if you look down there, you see Nick Foster Entertainment you know, <laughs> in the edge of the park. <laughs> Fantastic. See, these are the kinds of details. See, see right, right down there, you see Nick, Nick Foster? <laughs> <laughs> so, I have no idea what that means. The tail is made out of like nylon rope bundled together. It's pretty cool. All right, so this is one of my favorite features on any Lemons car is this totally sweet intake runner. Just this. That's the only thing that's amazing um, of any car in Lemons at all. Look at that. <laughs> Look how nicely it fits in that compartment. I know. I know. Everything about this is fantastic. Okay. Oh, you be <laughs> but, but thanks for but the penalty lap. We've never had one before. But just because. <laughs> yeah. This is the uh, Snow Speeder Pilots Association. They uh, are not running their MR2 at this race. They have this BMW E30. And as you do with BMW E30s, they swap the engine to a Volvo Red Block. I love this swap for so many reasons. It is the uh, the turbo. Oh my God! I'm frightened. It's got two air cleaners, Phil. Wow! Look at it! Look at it! Under cover. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to get the, your nice race car dirty. This is the Model T GT. Uh, Mike Musto, Musto drove it on uh, Big Muscle. I think was the show. Yeah, it's won eight races. Fish actually rents it out, so he's got rental drivers who you all drive it. And like I said, that's a Ford 302 and a T5 transmission. Pretty much all junk in its spec. No idea at all. Greetings, TV public. <laughs> Does that focus on an eye this far away? It, it actually did, cool. yeah. yeah it's it's okay. pretty good. Brad's driven this car. I have. It's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, probably the most fun I've ever had in a car. Yeah. It's ridiculous <laughs> and hilarious. So this car was built by a shop class, right? Yeah. Originally. Yep. Is it still like maintained by? Yep. No. Yeah, they, they take care of it regularly. Nice. What uh, what school? Gun High School. Gun High School. Okay. Nice. Which is on the uh, it's on the windshield there. Yep. Hey. Super awesome. So yeah, this is the uh, the Yo truck from uh, Toy Story. The Pizza Planet delivery truck, and uh, they've also uh, accurately represented the, uh, the chase scene from the movie. Down to the uh, down to the uh, owner's manual, which is fantastic. The details are great on this. Woody hanging off the back. Yeah. Too. So there's Woody hanging on the back. This car was just finished, like not yet. The only thing we ha we have to fix today probably is a uh, exhaust manifold leak. Yeah, no biggie. Uh, Rotero 2.0. It is a remarkably cromulent vehicle. <laughs> Surprisingly so. Uh, it's usually animated. It. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So here's the uh, the whole setup. Is that a, a wiper motor? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's very exciting. Anything you've seen that you've really liked? Well, um, no. So they got like the shaker hood, of course. But I, I love that they just bolted it onto the hood so it does no shaking. Which is, makes sense because the intake's actually over here. Take a look at the rotary rooter car running in second. These two cars, eyesore and rotary rooter on the lead lap together. They've got done all the good. Uh, Take a look at the rotary rooter. Arrow work down here with spray foam and uh, gardening edging. They've got done all the good uh, stand up for you. The arrow work down here with spray foam and the rotary edging. You can kill any thought. It does actually. As far as rotaries go, this is one of the better ones.
that not what? That's technically it's, off track, isn't it? Is that not a penalty? You know, I, I don't know that that's that ever been defined as whether or not that is uh, considered four wheels off. Is that considered four wheels off, Joe? That was right. Uh, we had this Cat's Eye Stand the Bill rolling road wheel. That's right, King Henry uh, VA. Yeah, that, that, that was ours. And uh, especially at that track, people just used this as a means of something else. You can yeah. see like, the, the leaders of the race coming up behind you. Uh, and you can see just ramming people. <laughs> 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 people yeah. behind you the slow. Stay there for half a lap. <laughs> the, the important thing is that you had style. Yeah, you had style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really key. No, to we really didn't have anything else, I would say. Ground here, so. Uh, Bert has returned. Oh, Bert from Holland is back. And he's a fan of the 424 Contour, which you can actually text in the race, and your message will scroll across the Oh, I've seen that car before. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that car. across the back. I had the idea that those people did it. Yeah. Uh, I can't really, I didn't tell anybody about it, so. Standard, standard messaging data rate supply, yes. It's so, going to be offensive uh, from Holland, I would imagine. Yeah, I hope yeah. Bert's texting them awesome <laughs> stuff. Uh, so 424 Contour, which is 424-8687, I think. Uh, well, that's not, that's not that's well, gotcha. uh, Matadare, world Hello. famous Matadare, um, you Lemons. have been involved in Lemons for way too long. You are the, the ultra famous creator of the um, uh, 430 uh, you, you Petty Cash Racing, racing LSXJ, which, which you can see, see in uh, this, this month's JP, JP magazine, magazine, which is currently on newsstands. Stands. Fantastic. Zero to promo in 18 Four page feature written by a steamed uh, auto journalist right. Eric Root no, from our uh, experience at Laguna Seca recently. This headset on. Uh, so we're also seeing right now, this is what they're seeing. Okay. Uh, so oh, that's seeing, cool. You can picture in picture a little yeah, bit. But, hey, is that our race car? That is your race car. Ah, interesting. We're so watching your race car live. Well, it is in currently locked in a battle for first place in B class. We, we just got a Jalopnik bump. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Um, Excellent. There we are. Who was uh, was that the Steph Schrader thing? That was Alanis. Uh huh. Steph knew about it. Uh, but Steph's too cool for us now, or what? Uh, she's way too cool for us. She's doing a Formula One thing. <laughs> can she be banned, banned again? Can we ban her totally again? Should. Yeah. yeah okay. You're banned. Jay's right there. Not. We can just walk right over there. And, you know, right. it hurts a bad. Another, another year ban. We we. Yeah, that's blowed up. You're live on uh, Racecast right now. By the way. Wait, wait. Cool. The uh, we've got the picture-in-picture picture thing, so everybody's watching your uh, your driving and uh, chatting with you actively right now. Anything you want to say to the fans? Cool, Mr. Ryan Doherty. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Autosport Labs. That's what everyone else is seeing out there. So. All right. Cool. Um, so basically, as you can see, if this is, this is the view you get for your own car. So you get, so you get stuff, stuff like times, like times uh, on the top and predicted time. So, so race capture, capture uh, all, the all the race captures do predicted timing, timing, which is awesome. awesome. So, so in the car, uh, we'll, we'll actually tell you what your, what your time will be if you keep the current pace, pace which, which is a lot of fun. fun. So basically, so you can, you can uh, play the game of chase the numbers, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can learn really quickly if taking this corner outside or inside or breaking later or earlier makes you faster. It's pretty cool. cool. Spark 3 is even better. better. Uh, the, the software, software has improved immensely. The, the web software has improved. Uh, uh, Fred, I can tell you the, the firmware update, firmware update process is much easier now. It's just a couple clicks. Yep, we did uh, it so yesterday on that car. Awesome. Yeah, so much easier to use. Uh, the Mark III is much simpler, much more com Everything is integrated. The race capture uh, we launched uh, a little over a year and a half, two years ago, is a plug and play system. OBD2 connector, plug it in. Yep. It, we have tracks bundled. It just works. It's connected to your phone. You're done. Something like for a more dedicated car, like the one behind us. Yes. Uh, I mean, a little more complicated, but certainly we really 
uh, sanded around the rough edges. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to use. There's a lot of people using it. Uh, we listen to our users. Uh, we talk to them all the time, every day. And so we hear their pain points and yeah. prove it on every revision. And you Obviously, I'm on the bridge. We're live right here. The camera's having a little trouble focusing on these cars ripping past us. So, easily one of the best places to watch a race. Lemons. Turned in a little bit early for that last turn, but he's using all the track out. That stuff's painted right there, so you don't get a whole lot of grip. He's getting flanked by a couple guys. Here's where you don't really have any power. So here, you actually want to hug that wall a little closer. You can track way out like he is. Stay to the right, stay to the right, stay to the right. Okay, he's still he's doing the inside line. So he, see how he's hugging those yellow lines there? Yeah. I'll talk you through that next line. I thought he was going to do the other line. Yeah, there's two lines, just, you know, way left or way right. So you can put your two right wheels on the painted line like that, but he turned in a little early. So popping up over the hill, you should be full throttle all the way over that hill and do the line perfectly right. Don't turn in until that second cone, so he's doing good. Yeah, he looks like he's probably got somebody on his right, that's why he's kind of like waiting there, waiting there. So you want to get the car over the right, you should be full throttle, full throttle, full throttle, let the car kind of drift over the left. He's going to go to the inside, so full throttle over the hill, now brake, down to third, he's still in fourth. So he's, see, he's, he's downshifted middle of the corner, that's going to kind of upset the corner. He let, he let a guy go there, so that's okay. If you do this right, your car should walk all the way out to the right. So up to fourth. And now downshift to third. You, you could use second gear if you're in traffic, but third gear is kind of magical. Uh, you want to hug that apex a little more. You want to kind of slalom out to the right a little further, slalom to the left a little further. That way you do a quick straight line braking. You barely need to touch the brakes here. You can really just dance it right over the hill and then you hear car just walk all the way out over the left. And everybody else slows down through there. You just don't have to. Uh, so third down to second. This is just slow. This is just get through it without hitting anybody. Right up on those curbs. There's there's really abrasive curbs. You don't need to ride on those. Can you hear this, Kyle? Um, full throttle, full throttle, full throttle. The car kind of wash out to the left. You should be way further out to the left. Somebody's entering the pits. There's nothing you can do there. You should be braking right around here down to second. Now he he kind of does an early apex and then all the track that works too mm -hmm. i kind of round in a little later yeah. uh, at all so let's see if he comes in. oh yeah so he's waiting he's, he's probably coming in so our boy joe is probably pitting there he is he's coming in so why do you yeah. Yeah. okay copy that we so see you he's coming in okay all right that's oh, the yeah. end of my so broadcast he's, he's i'm gonna go see what's wrong with our in. car Got our friends on the ranchero coming in a little slower <laughs> oh boy um, in on that's kind of a bummer. Yep. I did over to Eric Rude. Oh, He's got something interesting for us. Let's see that works out. And you may remember that the car ground to a halt at the very beginning of the day. And we will show you why here. So this is the... Uh, the Opal engine looks great. And you may remember that it's great. To a halt looks great. The beginning of the day. Not so much. And that's a connecting rod the, right there. Uh, the Opal yes. engine. Looks you can great. see. Uh, yes, you can see the ground through the engine because if we go the other way, 
look at the connecting rod. I'll show you uh, right. left of the you can see, uh, you can so, see the ground. Yeah, if you go down here, hey, there's some some daylight coming in through the side of the block. And there's a giant hole in the oil pan. Not very much oil pan left. <laughs> Not much oil pan left, indeed. I'd like to thank our sponsor again, Fresh Air Systems Technology, for helping us out to put this on. If you need a cool suit, they, uh, they build really, really good shirts with uh, many, many feet of surgical tubing in them. And then you hook it up to a fast cooler system with a pump with ice water in it, and it'll run cool water through oh, okay. your shirt. Oh, there you go. 32. Yes. This, yes. Uh, so if you are in need of a cool suit okay. setup. Oh, there you go. 32. Or if you would like a helmet blower. No, because they can do that yes. also. Get a hold uh, of fast. So you are in need of a and, uh, cool they will take yes. that set up. Oh, there you go. 32. Or if you would like a helmet blower. <laughs> no, because they can do that also. The Arcane Auto Society, yes. So this engine is a, uh, well, it's a four cylinder. And it has Lucas Electrics. God help us all. Because that's what you want in the middle of uh, a body of water is any kind of Lucas Electrics. <laughs> yes. Pretty sweet. Tiny engine in the back. Just like a, uh, just like a Porsche. Just like it. Okay. Just like it. And where is my damn flying car? Seriously, come on. I love uh, I do. Yes, I have. I have a love of these original Fiat 500s because they are so incredibly tiny. Now, this one's a uh, has the velour top or the. Uh, De Capo Tom. De Capo, yeah, sure. So this is a Toyota Sports 800. And I know that because uh, it says Toyota Sports 800 on the back. This is a Concours de Lemons car, which is the uh, Concours spin off of the 24 Hours of Lemons. This was under the soul-sucking Japanese appliance category. Let's see, it has a. Uh, I would think so. So it's right-hand drive with Hello Kitty seats, seat covers that are very short. Very tiny shifter. It says something as a Porsche guy yeah. that there's a gorgeous 356 parked next to it, and yeah. I would pay more attention. Hi. How you doing? Good. Is this yours? Yep. Want to look under the hood? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. I do. Yeah. Look at that. Motor goes from there to there. It's a flat twin. Flat twin. Yeah. So. Look at that. Take a take a pause here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. So, worth noting that this is a team of middle school kids who built that race car. And I don't know who drives it, but whoever it is, they're letting their kids down. It's very disappointing to see. <laughs> the, the kids help to build the Mustang? The kids, yeah, they, the kids do all of the work. It's kind that's of spectacular. Amazing. Like That's the easiest way to get your car built. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just free labor. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll probably actually be done right, actually, <laughs> yeah. is, is the, the great irony of it. You know, I don't know that we've done this. We probably should do this a yeah. little late in the game, and that is let everybody know who we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Eric Green. Uh, I write about cars for a living. So I'm here talking about cars, and I've judged Lemons races, raced a couple times. Uh, been around Lemons for seven years. Nice. Um, I am Julian Cordell. Uh, I'm the person behind the race cast stuff, but also been involved in Lemons for about four years uh, with the Snow Speeder Pilots, uh, based in Southern Oregon. Now you're in, you live in Chicago. I live in Oregon. Bradley, I'll give you the headset. 
you can tell us. <clears throat> I'm Brad Brownell. Uh, I also write about cars for a living, like an idiot. Are they only non-journalists here? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is actually my first time at a Lemons event. Well, actually, accidentally I went to one, but but I didn't view it. Uh, this is my first time at a full Lemons event. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so, anyway, I live in Reno, Nevada. And I came over here for the weekend because why not? Waste some time. <laughs> not a good sign. So we're going to... Like a, like a, uh, you know, coaching. Whoa, red chair spin at the top of. So you gotta find. Wow. Saying hi to the guys at Strike Stand. Hold on. Wow, that guy is flying. Woo! Wow. <laughs> he really wants off that track, I guess. You know, you see those cars come in so hot, you figure that they're going into the pits, and then yes. you see them make a right hand Woo! turn, and you're like, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. They are. No, oh, they're right on the front straight. On the too. front straight. Uh, and they turn do not, one. They certainly don't look like they're going to get it. It is started. running. I think. Yeah, it is. But it's, uh, you can almost see one of the gauges over here on the uh, far left. Looks pegged. Uh, he's going to pull off pull into the, off. uh, into the, hey! Look at that, without even causing a full course yellow. <laughs> comes off the uh, pull off at turn one. All right. So All right. Well. now, now he's likely to be getting stuck in in the paddock uh, because if it's overheating, driving right. ten miles an hour is going to help. Not going to help. Yeah. Not going to help. It's a good look through the paddock, though. That's on the back side behind the uh, grandstand, obviously. And uh, up to the right is how you get to the upper paddock. And. Uh, should take a left before this big truck. It is definitely still running. Yeah. And just He's right. Like, Get the heck out of my way. Right about. Overheating car here. If you look to the left, it looks like Tiny Vet's been packed up. That's yep. where Tiny Vet was. Yep. It's a riveting drive through the paddock. Indeed. <laughs> at 10 uh, miles there's, out. there's actually not that many uh, cars left in the paddock anymore. I think everybody who's yeah. had a failure is pretty much packed up. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure where he's going now. I, I don't think he knows. Yeah, there we go. All okay. Right. So we're over by the uh, firehouse. That's pretty good. Yeah, most of the cars at this point in the day, if something breaks that's going to take any amount of time, you know, most teams just throw it on the trailer. Sure. Uh, but uh, the, the flip now side. Now he's really lost. Yeah, okay. So he knows he needs to go right. <laughs> And we should see him pop through here in just a second. There we go. Yeah, so he found the Wee Woo, which is the uh, Transcon Medivan. Yes. And, uh, oh, it's okay because he's being pushed. All right. This suddenly oh, makes a lot more now, sense. <laughs> yes, now it makes sense. Again, with the uh, the pushing instead of towing. Um, All right. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, uh, now is a good time to say thanks to all the corner workers and the volunteers yeah. who are doing the, yeah, the safety the, uh, workers. tow truck driving. I don't think uh, the tow truck crews and uh, safety crews do nearly as much work as they do on Lemons Weekend. Probably not. Weekend. Probably not, yeah. Uh, the tow trucks are pretty much driving all the time yes. at some point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's the one. The 133. Oh! Uh, oh, you didn't hear it. Hmm. I heard uh, in the audio feed, I heard gravel and yeah. giggles and punk hook. Yeah. Maybe dropping a couple tires there. Yeah. We're going to talk to Steve McDaniel about the rally. Uh, Steve McDaniel, who you are, who are you, and what do you do? I don't know where do? I'm looking. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm Steve McDaniel. Wait, wait, wait. we got to turn around. we got to see this. Oh, my wings. He was worried about his image a little bit. Yeah. 
So it, everybody, according to the internet, I'm scary and people are scared of me. So I want to wear some wings. You, so you did win the poll. I'm not even a bad guy. I'm an angel, in fact. So I, I made that um, poll about which judge was that you? That yeah, that was that? me. Yeah. 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 That, which judge they would least like? I kept to telling see. Phil that everybody was scared of me, and he's like, "Nah, it's just coincidence that they all behave when you're at the race <laughs> and I run the lemon rallies, uh, set those up through the, uh, the the routes and all the planning and everything that goes into those, and then supervise those out on the road." I think a lot of people might hear that and they might fear that, oh man, I got to go through the tech rule book and I got to put a roll. No, like, no, like, for the rallies, there's no it's safety lemons, whatsoever. But it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's yeah. on street. Yeah, roads. so bring your crappy car, but you don't need a roll cage. You don't need safety equipment. You don't need anything but a driver's license, uh, current registration, and insurance. That's it. You can bring absolutely anything you want. You can do it by yourself. You don't need a team of people. Uh, you might want a, a toolbox full of tools and maybe some spare parts. Uh, but other than that, you can uh, come and run it and bring some friends if you want. But if you just want to bring your crappy car out and uh, go cruise some cool roads with some uh, – some other people that share your passion for crappy cars yeah. then uh, you can do that so what's the like is the idea that everyone kind of goes a certain distance each day and you meet up at yeah we're, waffle house or is it kind of open-ended like anyone goes as far as they want on this path yeah it's kind of it's kind of open-ended you don't have to you know we have a start point and then every night we have a <clears throat> Uh, a, a suggested hotel and a suggested meeting place for everybody to meet up, right. have dinner, beers. But take as much of that as you want or don't. But in between, uh, we do give them the option of seeking out uh, curious roadside attractions and various things along the way for extra bonus points. Okay. They can do all of those if they want. They don't have to do any of them if they want. They can just go drive around, take their own route. Uh, we don't really set the route. We just kind of put in a chain of points and they're the, the amounts vary depending on how cool they are and how hard they are to get to, things like that. And then if they want to go for those, they can go for the extra points. If they just want to take the short route and go to the hotel and wait for people to get there and drink beer, they can do that too. So totally okay. open-ended. Awesome. Well, we had a good race this weekend. You've been in the penalty yeah. box being a judge, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, It looks like it's getting a little busy over there now. It's getting late in the day. People are getting a little greedy. Uh, uh. But, uh, yeah, we had a few cars get a little crashed yesterday, but overall the uh, the behavior's been pretty well. Penalty box has been fairly slow, uh, Good deal. but here in Sonoma, it's very unforgiving. If you lose it in the wrong place, you're going to find a wall. And so yeah. we bent a few too many yesterday, but they say it's Sonoma. Each nobody cars. got hurt, so yeah. that's all that matters. Awesome. Why? I think we all feel better now. Thank you. Pretty close to the tipping point where uh, Rancho de Lama would have enough gap. They could pretty much park the car till the end. 47 minutes out. I'd say they need probably another five, 10 laps to, uh, well, five laps should cinch that down. You know, because unlike other forms of racing, your car does not have to be running at the end to win. I don't know that it's ever been the case that a non-running car has won. Uh, there was one particular race at New Hampshire, maybe it's Thompson, where a car crossed the start-finish line on the final lap of the race and lost the wheel and did not finish the race. And a car on the same lap then went around to, I believe they were a lap behind, so then they f went across the stripe with the same number of laps. Uh, theoretically, the car that went across that lap total that lost the wheel should have been the winner, but the two teams agreed to split the win. So, for the first time that I know of, there was a tie in racing. Uh, that was between the, uh, I believe, the Keystone Cops Volvo and the, who was the other car? I do not remember the other car. Now. That's not particularly helpful. But there's a team. There are two teams with half a win in left. So. Uh, got a question here asking if that was a Lotus Seven. I believe you're talking about the Model T GT, uh, which is built on a Model T frame with basically uh, kind of an old Model A bed. Here it comes again, right there. The red, white, and blue car. I assume you're talking about. And uh, it's got a Ford 302 V8 in it, uh, Pinto front and rear suspension, uh, a seat and a fuel cell, and not much else. So the bodywork is like an old Model T Roadster. Uh, that was built by uh, 
some old school hot rodders. And you can actually rent that car. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is for the weekend. I want to say it's around $5,000 for a weekend all in. All you have to do is show up and drive the car with, you know, your crew of drivers. Or I think they'll rent it out per seat. Not sure on the particulars, but uh, yeah, you can race that car if you would like. And that is an eight-time race winner uh, with varying crews. Um, a very competent crew. Uh, pretty much has a leg up on everybody. Yeah. I'm uh, glad I could help answer your question. Yeah, it's a great car. Uh, Hot Rod Magazine actually did a feature on it in 2012 or 2011. So if you look up Hot Rod Magazine Model T GT, there's a really good feature on it there. Uh, really good photos. It looked different then. I think it was all rusty. So it's just a rust-colored car. And... Uh, and then I believe Mike Musto drove it on his drive show. So he did like a test drive and raved about it. It's a very cool car. Uh, about 200 horsepower, weighs I think 2,600 pounds. It's just about the right formula to win Lemons races. And that it looks like the uh, Class B leader coming to the pits. Oh, interesting. Uh, we'll see if they're just going to do a splash of gas, maybe, or they may be doing a driver change. I know I Matt think Adair had been in the car for a long time, so he may be... I don't know that uh, they would do a driver change this late. I'm surprised that they're here at all. We'll see what happens. They should be rolling past behind us here. Oh, and he's, he's the left. So they are doing something to the car. He's going to pull in right to his right, right there. And we'll see what happens here have any pit staff right oh there they go oh, it looks rather hectic be a bit of drama here did he close the door or is the door still open yeah uh, the hood here closed it yeah Interesting. You want to go check that out? Yeah. I'll send uh, Julia and the... ran out of gas? We're not sure. He shouldn't have. For a four. I know he shouldn't have. Well, it didn't look like it had a boost leak or anything, so there's that exhaust that was stowed. I, I think it's just the Corrado. Jay St. Clair, owner of this. Let's see, where is it? That one right there. That right one. There. That one. That one. The car right there. Yeah. And Matt Adair is driving. And we're, uh, yeah, after a one minute, minute year, thirty-four this is, seconds. Uh, I think the best we've ever done by a long shot. Yeah, good job. Nice. There you go, buddy. That's it. Good yeah, back. Thanks, Julian. You bet. This is fantastic. Glad you can share it with everyone. All right, dude. I'm gonna come over and meet you in the pits. Thanks, nice, Julian. Nice you bet, buddy. Congrats. Thank you. Jay St. Speed with a Class B victory. Matt Adair in the car. Across the checkered line. Class A. We're going to go to Eyesore Racing. Shall we get started? 
good? First of all, thank you all for making it to the bitter end. We beat the rain, thank goodness. Uh, thank you for being here. And before it is too late, we've still got a couple of workers out there. Those poor bastards have wasted their entire weekend so that you can have fun. Let them know you appreciate that. said yesterday morning uh if your car survived now your overall winners and class a winners this is perhaps an old song that you have heard before but i just want to say they were singing this this very sad song for many years that oh we have a stock fuel tank we'll never win another race it is impossible we can't compete blah 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 well they still did it they won on a nine and a half gallon charge between drivers i saw racing Well done, boys. Very well done. Now, as much as Eyesore Racing is used to being in the winner's circle, and you have seen them up here many times, the Class B winners, <laughs> it is a different story. And in fact, one particular driver of the Class B winner has been trying for about, I don't know, 10 years to get a trophy in this deal, and he has achieved a second place in class five times going into this race. And finally, it all came together. Matt Adair, come get your class B trophy for Trap Pan. <laughs> and Tim Tomas, a lot of deserving veterans on this team. Nice Scirocco! <laughs> well done, guys, and of course enjoy it, because it will never happen again. <laughs> and welcome to Class A. Here's your check. <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. Excellent performance. And on the subject of an excellent performance, your Class C victor pretty much dominating the class. I am standing on it now. Your new Class B stalwart, the Volo Amazon of Rancho de Lama. Come get your prize. Well done, Beautiful car, very well done. For the next two trophies, give it up for Judge Phil. Hey everybody. Alright, so we got the heroic fix. So there was a team that showed up here with a car that was originally intended for street use that got T-boned really hard. And uh, they showed up and they failed tech because they didn't know how to build a cage, they didn't read our rules. And I told them, after they threw a rod in their motor, that if you f take the bad uh, rod and uh, piston out and make this a three banger and get it on the track, we'll give you a heroic fix. Well, they didn't do that. <laughs> However, they did actually manage to pass tech with a car we were sure would never pass. So I decided, you know what, they can do a fix anyway. So um, 365, the uh, White Alfetta Type 1 Diabetes Awareness. Come on down. Yeah. <laughs> that prize does not come with any money. I got screwed, not very coincidentally. 
another Alfa Romeo. This car actually won a race years ago. It is a very, oh, I'm sorry, wrong tense there, verb tense. It was a very fast GTV6. It now has been completely obliterated during the festival of crashing that was yesterday here. That car will never race again. And so those guys got completely screwed and then they made you all pasta for dinner yesterday. I'm talking about number 34, the Alfa Romeo Syndicate Excellente. Come on down. Yeah, here you go. One we haven't done. Yes. <laughs> all right. Very well done, guys. I'm glad you are here. That's mildly to severely disturbing. Before, before these guys get down, I want to add something else, which is that, you know, we do this charity. It's called Lemon's Aid. We get together. Mechanics who work on lemons, they donate their time and they donate their tools, and in some cases they even donate their professional spaces to help families in need who cannot afford to get their cars running again, to get their cars running so they can take the kids to school, they can go to work, they can do all the things that we all take for granted. Now, next weekend, Bill Arnold right here has donated his entire shop and his crew and all of their tools and their time to host an entire day of Lemons Aid repairs for families who need it. How good is that? That is happening on Sunday, and if I did not mention that to you guys, Bill would never say it himself. Is it Saturday? Saturday. That's a good thing, because I would have shown up on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys work that out. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. It's great. Thank you very much. Next couple of trophies, Judge Steve. Give it up for Judge Steve. Thank you. I heard a lot of you guys are scared of me, so I'm working on my image. What do you think? No. I'm not an angel. All right, fine. Go back to being scared. All right, so the retro trip this time around. These guys showed up a few races ago. They had one car. Now all of a sudden they got three. I don't know how many of them there are. There's dozens and dozens of them. But they're doing a great thing. They're raising up the next generation of women's racers. They're a little bit mystery on the racetrack. Occasionally... But we like their attitude, they're having a great time. So for the de-education camp trophy, <laughs> the Blue Oak School! <laughs> Good job, guys. Teachers out of trouble. It's the teachers who cause all the trouble. It ain't the kids. Right on. That's pretty around, fantastic. Introduce you guys to our special guest judge this weekend, Jeff Gates, Mallory Motors. So for the judges' choice this time, this was a, a rookie team who often win the judges' choice. And uh, these guys showed up with a car, a pretty typical car. We've seen a lot of them. We've seen a lot of motor swaps in these cars. A lot of people like to cram V8s in these cars. And these guys did the same thing. But they used them a laser, a small block Ford with an automatic C4 and a radiator out of an international truck <laughs> sticking about eight inches out of the hood. And they went out and they sucked all weekend. But they had a great attitude. We love the car. We love the pathetic nature of it. Yeah. So for the judging choice this time, we're on the 160, yeah. the Black VA yeah. Celica. Yeah. Nut Sack Racing. <laughs> great name. Great name. <laughs> the organizer's choice trophy to the team that just amuses the organizers the most and you can earn this in any number of ways. 
This time it was a team whose themes and decorations continue to sort of baffle and impress us over and over. In the past they have done great Bozozuku themes, which we always love. And this time they decided to get even a little more obscure and sort of higher education on us and took their horrible Blue for Thunderbird and did a quite passable Magritte themed uh, uh, team concept for the whole car. Went around puffing smoke out of their giant pipe all weekend long and just pretty much uh, encapsulating the weirdness that is the surrealism of lemons. Yeah. The team name Myopic Motorsports, the Blue T-Bird. Giant Magritte pipe on the top. Come get your trophy. Yeah. As part of oh, the performance art team, there they are. Oh, there they are. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. That is, that is an example of the art that should be. That is a champion performance. Very nice. Yes. All right. Well done, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> the index of effluency, the top trophy in the 24 Hours of Lemons, the car that achieves the most yeah. with the least and ticks us off the least. And these are. Great guys, they have been running for years and years and years and have been really below the radar. They have gotten no recognition for what they do and this time they finally got their incredibly slow, essentially utterly bone stock, terrible vehicle to perform remarkably well. Uh, they were really way up in the standings, which we couldn't believe it. We actually had to recheck the standings to make sure that wasn't wrong because <laughs> their car is so terrible. But they've been working the same theme. They have been incredibly helpful to a lot of other teams, and it's long overdue that they get recognition. This is the white, terrible Ford Ranger of the crew transport team. Uh, that is Restart Racing, it's called, and their white Ranger. Oh, oh yes, and, and if you're being shy, there is money associated with this award. Yeah. So, where do they go? Or are they out still picking up flaggers in the back? Are you guys here? Are you here? No. All right, screw them. Forget it. We're leaving. Yeah. Uh, we will. We will get in touch with them and ship it to them. They did a fine job. So. Everybody, it is going to be slick out there. It has been a long weekend. You are tired. Please get home safely, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here.